Not long ago, I shot this image of NGC 3628. It was the culmination of eight hours of imaging, and overall, I'm pretty happy with it. But, you know, it could be improved. I think the image is a little soft, and I'd like to bring out some sharpness in the detail. Attempts to enhance sharpness in PixInsight didn't pan out well. Using PixInsight's unsharp mask, the galaxy soon acquired a gritty look. So I exported the image to Affinity Photo, where I attempted the process using Clarity, Unsharp Mask, and High Pass filter tools. I found that each tool worked a bit better, but on its own, each tool soon also devolved into grittiness. It was just very easy to oversharpen and add too much contrast before a desired appearance of sharpness resolved in the image. Fortunately, there is a better way to work this out. A little used tool and technique called frequency separation comes to the rescue here. Let's dive in. In PixInsight, I've already done initial processing, that is run Blur Exterminator, stretch the histogram, run Noise Exterminator, merged the LRGB channels, then separated out a star plate with Star Exterminator, and then exported everything into Affinity Photo. And then Affinity Photo, I've also done initial developing. Which is to say, I used the Curves tool to enhance the colors and the luminance channel pertinent to the background layer. I've also brought in the star layer, or star plate, and set it to a screen composite mode so that the stars can show over the image. Let's go ahead and explore how to sharpen this further without degrading the image. The first thing I'm going to do is turn off the star layer. We're not going to work on it, and we don't want it to distract from what we are seeing in the galaxy layer. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure the background layer is selected, along with its children layers, the curves layers that give it its, its enhanced color, and also the curves adjustment layer up top, then I'm going to merge those visible layers and make a new pixel layer. Then I'll make the underlying background or galaxy layer invisible, and we're going to operate only on the new pixel layer. I meant to name this pixel layer Pixel Sun Stars and ended up forgetting the sauce, so it's Pixel Stars. That is our background layer with the hamburger galaxy in it. I'm going to move that layer up to the second from the top, just below the star layer, LRGB stars, so that when the galaxy layer is visible, we are only seeing it. Now we're going to go to the top of Affinity Photo to the Filters menu, and below the Astrophotography submenu, we're going to find the Frequency Separation tool. Click on that to evoke the tool. The tool will pop up and split the screen. On the left, you will see your high frequency detail. This is where the fine structure of an image contained within the high frequency information is found. On the right, you'll see the low frequency detail. This refers to the color and shading of an image. You can drag the split screen bar around the view to show more or less of the high or low frequency information. At the moment, you don't see much information on the left because we haven't yet made changes to the frequency separation tool. In the frequency separation tool menu on the right, you can see we are working with the Gaussian method of separating that information. And just like with a Gaussian blur tool, we can control the amounts of blur, or in this case, removal of high frequency information with a slider bar. Now this tool will allow me to separate out that information as a new layer. And I'm going to move the radius slider all the way to the right to capture all that information and place it within the high frequency layer where we can work very discreetly and precisely to sharpen it exactly as we want. When I have the slider bar all the way to the right, I hit the apply button. And you can see in the layer menu on the right of the screen, we now have two new layers a layer called High Frequency and Low Frequency. If I turn off the High Frequency information, all we see is the blurry information containing color and luminance in the Low Frequency information. And if I turn off the Low Frequency information, all we see is the sharpness and contrast detail contained in the High Frequency information. Now, working only on the High Frequency layer, I'm going to begin to selectively sharpen it. And I'm going to begin that process with a non-destructive live unsharp mask. I'll begin by slowly raising the pixel radius to be affected, very carefully watching the stardust lanes in the middle of the galaxy for the development of grittiness as I raise and adjust the unsharp mask. I want to push the unsharp mask as far as I can without the image devolving into grittiness. When I think I have it where I want, I'll reactivate the low frequency information and test the final image. Removing the low frequency information from the unsharp mask viewing while working on it allows me to see very clearly exactly what information is being affected by the unsharp mask. It's not quite where I want it yet, and this is an iterative process. Trial and error gets you there. So I'll just keep making a few more changes to the unsharp mask till I feel that between adjusting the pixel radius and the factor, I've pulled as much sharpness out of the galaxy's belt as I can before it devolves into grittiness. That'll do. 
Now I'm going to enhance the contrast between pixels in the mid-range luminosity with the Clarity tool. Clarity tools can make or break an image very easily, so use them very gently. Tiny changes are usually sufficient. In this case, I think a 9% clarity increase will be enough. It's actually a little bit more than I thought I would want. However, turning the clarity tool on and off reveals that the clarity tool has negatively affected some of the haze around the galaxy. It's oversharpened it a little, causing it to retract toward the center of the galaxy. I want to remove that, so I'm going to open up the paintbrush tool, set the paintbrush tool to mask, and select a black color which tells the paintbrush tool to erase. And then, with the clarity tool layer only selected so that we are operating only on the clarity layer, I'm going to paint around the outside of the galaxy, removing the clarity tool's effects from the outside of the galaxy. That will unsharpen the haze around the galaxy, restoring it to its full and natural width and haziness. This operation has by and large been a success, but the use of the Unsharp Mask and the Clarity tool have reintroduced some noise into the image. Affinity Photo has some decent noise removal tools, but nothing I know of is more powerful than the Noise Exterminator. So I'm going to export the starless working image of the Hamburger Galaxy as a TIFF and open that TIFF in PixInsight so I can run the Noise Exterminator on it. Noise Exterminator I can emulate it with some complex application of various tools in Affinity Photo, but I cannot perfectly repeat it. I wish I could so I could avoid some of this exporting and importing back and forth, but there is nothing else like Noise Exterminator. It is incredible. Anyway, the outcome is exactly what we are looking for. It's very nice. Now I'm going to save this once again as a TIFF and export it back into Affinity Photo. Back in Affinity Photo with our sharpened and now denoised version of the Hamburger Galaxy, I'll place the new galaxy layer directly under the stars and turn the star layer back on. And then finally, we can see the finished outcome. That looks very nice. Let's take a moment and compare the before and after. We can easily see that the right image, where frequency separation has been done, is clearly sharper with more defined structures. Separating out high frequency from low frequency information does not in itself improve an image. Rather, it allows us to conduct sharpening operations only on the high frequency information, which minimizes the risk of introducing artifacts and grittiness. And at any time, we can turn off the low frequency information to see exactly how any given sharpening tool is affecting the information. We're now zoomed in to 2.3 times the size of the image. And here, we can still see more resolution of sharpness after frequency separation and no devolution of the image into grittiness. It isn't JWST quality, but it's pretty good. Finally, let's back off both images to their original size. Overall, the image looks great here. We still have greater sharpness on the right, where the detail within the stardust belt around the Hamburger Galaxy is more readily visible. However, I think there is a degree of subjectivity here. To your eye, you may prefer the lower contrast or lower sharpness on the left. And if so, that's fine. There's always room for personal choice. What matters is that knowing you can use frequency separation to tease out the high frequency information where you will find the detail from any astro image will allow you to go about more refined and specific sharpening of images, any images that you choose in the future. I hope you find that helps with your workflow. Now as always, get out there and shoot the sky.